right now on Denver 7, it's a weather action day. A winter storm is heading our way, bringing bitter cold temps and plenty of snow. Staff turnover at nursing homes has recently become an even greater issue, but there's a new way to see specifically where it's happening so your loved one can receive the best care. And there's new attention on the role 3D printed homes could play in affordable housing. We're looking into a partnership working to make this a national model. And a suspect is in custody after a tense morning in Boulder. What we know about him so far and how he could be connected to threats in another state. But let's start off with a live look outside on this weather action day. What are we supposed to be looking at? Well, usually that's the Denver skyline, and I'm told that you can see, quote, nothing on all of our cameras because the snow, yes, has arrived here. We've been talking about it for a couple of days now. Katie LaSalle joins us now. Katie, this storm is just getting started. Jason, good afternoon to you. It is a slow moving, powerful winter storm. Snow is already falling in the Denver area and will continue to do so through tomorrow. Temperatures are dropping. Winds are strong, sustained from the northeast at 14 miles per hour, and we are already getting some snow packed roadways. A live look over 285 to Conifer. Definitely want to be careful over the next 24 hours as more widespread snow moves into the front range and plains as th those temperatures will take a big hit. A live look at satellite and radar now over the Denver area. You can see some heavier snow just off to the west down through Centennial and Parker and those snow showers continue into Perry Park down through Woodmore and will become widespread over the I-25 corridor all the way down south to the border through tonight. So winter storm warnings, winter weather advisories in place until at least midnight on Wednesday. Denver under a winter weather advisory that extends east and up into the foothills and mountains could see some really significant snow totals under that winter storm warning. Now tonight by 9 o'clock we'll drop down to 21 degrees, teens by 11 and we'll start off very very cold. More on specific snow totals in your neighborhood coming up. All right, Katie, thank you. As the snow related closures come in, the Denver 7 Plus app is going to be your friend. Download it now for your phone or streaming device to access our 24 7 weather stream and make sure to watch Denver 7 News tomorrow morning starting at 430 for the latest closures and impacts to your morning commute. Well, a man is now in custody after causing lockdowns and evacuations in Boulder this morning. Shelter in place orders have since been lifted in the University Hill neighborhood. And tonight we're learning disturbing new details about the suspect and his role in threats made against a California university. Denver 7's Jacqueline Allen is live in Boulder with the latest. Jacqueline. Well, Jason, you can see here, this is all that's left of the crime scene tape that surrounded this entire area. But earlier today, this had a huge impact on the University Hill neighborhood. We are right across the street from super. CU. Police had to evacuate this elementary school here. They evacuated fraternities and sororities and people living in the nearby neighborhood were told to shelter in place for hours. Now, the upshot is a peaceful resolution to what we're finding out was a very scary situation. Let me break it down for you right now. This all started yesterday at UCLA in California, where the university police have reported violent email threats from a former lecturer in philosophy there. The man's name is Matthew Harris. We found his YouTube rants and included references to mass shootings in Vegas and Columbine High School. Now, UCLA police tracked Harris to, to Boulder, to this apartment complex here. Boulder police tell us today that they read his 800-page manifesto and decided to proceed with extreme caution. You just need to listen to the police chief uh, explain this to understand why. Upon reviewing parts of the manifesto, we identified thousands of references to violence, stating things such as killing, death, murder, shootings, bombs, schoolyard massacre in Boulder, and phrases like burn and attack Boulder outside of the university. Now, the good news is that after a very dramatic three hours, they took him into custody safely. They're looking at federal and state charges. And one reason this is so significant is because they said of the trauma that Boulder has been through, not just in the last year with the violence, but in the last month with the fire. And that is something that they are taking into consideration as they deal with this. We'll have more on that coming up tonight on Denver 7 News at 5. Reporting live in Boulder, Jacqueline Allen, Denver 7. Jacqueline, thank you. The FBI and ATF, meanwhile, are investigating more than a dozen bomb threats made at historically black colleges and universities today. At Howard University in Washington, D.C., this is the second day in a row it has received a threat. So far, authorities have not found any explosive devices. Federal and local investigators have not spoken about a potential motive.
to the Broncos, where the team is now officially up for sale. The Bolin Family Trust made the announcement today the team will be put up for bid and could smash records for a final price. Forbes values the team at $3.75 billion. Around six or seven ownership groups are expected to make a bid. Peyton Manning is reported to be part of one potential ownership group. Our Troy Rank says the sale could be completed any time from this spring all the way to late fall. The Broncos also in the news being named in a lawsuit against the NFL for alleged racist hiring practices. Now, it was brought by former Dolphins coach Brian Flores. In the suit, he claimed that multiple teams, including the Broncos, conducted sham interviews with diverse candidates just to fulfill a hiring rule without ever hiring candidates of color. All right, topping the news feed, BA2. Omicron subvariant is actually more transmissible to vaccinated people than its original variant. That's according to a Danish study that also shows vaccines still play an important role. Both fully vaccinated and those with a booster were less likely to be infected or to transmit either Omicron variant. Athletes and team leaders are testing positive for COVID at much higher rates than others arriving for Beijing's Olympics. Local organizers say 11 of the 379 athletes and officials arriving today tested positive. Over a three-day period, the positivity rate for athletes and officials was 40% higher than other Olympic arrivals. The CDC has added 12 more destinations to its high COVID level avoidance list. Some are popular travel spots in Mexico. The country does not require visitors to show a proof of vaccination or a negative COVID test. Places on the list include Cabo, Cancun and Mexico City. They've seen a sharp rise in Omicron cases. The pandemic has made staffing at nursing homes even more challenging. But for the first time, it's easier to find out what staff turnover is like at nursing homes in your area. Medicare is now posting those details on its com Care Compare website. That's medicare.gov slash care hyphen compare. Now you can select a particular nursing home, then click view staffing information. We've historically been known to have a uh, high turnover uh, as, as other sectors are too. Uh, and a lot of it relates back to that most of the nursing homes is paid by Medicaid and we just aren't able to offer the com competitive wages that hospitals and other health care providers are. The Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services has researched the links between staff turnover and quality of care. Initial results suggest as staff turnover decreases, the overall quality rating for facility increases. Starting this summer, the agency will be using the information on staff turnover to calculate its quality rates for facilities. The American Healthcare Association says many workers do want to stay, but point to factors like low wages or child care problems as reasons for leaving. The association's chief medical officer believes the public is really seeing how bad the staffing situation is through this Care Compare website. The staff there really do end up caring for the residents almost as if they're family members. And uh, so it is, it's very hard when someone leaves and we need to recognize that. And I think this data just shows that uh, not making nursing homes sort of a priority has led to more turnover. And we need to sort of solve that root problem uh, with this information. Now, Medicare says posting the new turnover information for consumers will not create additional burdens like paperwork for nursing homes. The data is already regularly reported to the government. It's just now becoming accessible to the public. Recently, me mental health concerns have surged, but some people may not be seeking therapy just yet. We're looking into some proven tactics to help reduce anxiety and depression to try instead. Plus, new concerns as Louisville starts to rebuild after the Marshall Fire. Why residents are upset over a new green housing policy, calling it unfair.